In this video, let's take a first look at tables in Lua. Tables in Lua are, in a nutshell, variables that can store more than one value, and they can be used in two different ways. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can use tables in Lua to store lists of values. Used in this way, tables behave a little bit like sequences in Grandma 2. While sequences can store queues, and each queue has a specific queue number, lists in Lua are similar. It's a sequence of values where each value can have their own queue number, if you will. And only in this case, we will call the queue number key and contents of each list in this items are not programmer values like in MA2, but instead they are values just like you would be able to assign to variables in Lua. Now, before we dive into the code, uh, let's quickly clear up the terminology here. What we're seeing in this video is just one way to use tables in Lua. We'll see the other way in the next video. So if you've programmed in other languages before, what we're seeing in this video is usually referred to as arrays in other languages. And since that's just a fancy term for list of things, I decided to refer to it that way in this video where we see how we can use tables to sort of create these lists, right? So, but just like with strings and integers, please know that there's an official term for list of things in computer science, and that's array. So keep that in mind for your Google searches. All right, but enough with the theory. Let's go and take a look at today's example. I'm first of all going to copy and paste this over to the console. Let's see here. So this screen, we'll need that in a second. Um, I'll explain. I'm just going to store this over here. I'm going to call it effects. And I already went ahead and stored this plugin in this lists plugin slot. So what we need in this example are a bunch of effects. And all I did here is just select our group of dimmers and load it in some predefined effects. And if you have a similar style of show building to me, then you will probably have a ton of effects that you'd like to reuse quite a bit. And then you might also have them grouped in different parts of your effects pool. And what we will see in this video in this plugin is actually how we can create a list. So what we'll see in a second is that we run this plugin and it's going to ask us for a bunch of effects and also for a starting executor number and then it's going to assign those effects. And it's probably not the most practical example in the world, but it's a good example to show you how lists in Lua work. So I have the effects. Uh, I am going to open up the executor panel over here. And now what I want to do is assign five executors over here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm actually going to, let me see here. I'm going to set up another plugin pool just so I can see everything. <laughs> and uh, let me also add the command line feedback over here and then the system monitor. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and store that again, perfect. So now these effects, we wanna assign them over here, right? I'm just going to copy and paste this one as another example. And you can see they're a bit scattered. So first of all, the plugin is now going to ask us for a starting executor number and I'm gonna go and pick six in this case. And now I can enter multiple numbers. So first, let's take the first effect, then the second effect, then effect number five. And of course, it's completely random that the only effects in here that I wanna use are the ones that uh, <laughs> I prepared. Oh man. You know, these kind of examples can get a little artificial after a while, but hey, what you gotta do? As long as you understand the concepts, What's interesting now is I'm not entering a number, but instead I'm just going to hit enter and that's going to end this plugin execution and we'll assign these effects to these executor slots. And there we go. So now after just a little bit of typing in numbers of the effects that we want to have, they're all assigned and ready to go. Okay, now let's take a look at the code and keep in mind what just happened so you can actually follow along. And as always, let's take a look at the function that's being returned as per our convention. It's called main in this case, but it doesn't have to be, right? What's happening here is that we're first of all asking for a starting executor. 
right here. And we're just going to take that number so we can count it up later. So that's why we're using the two number keyword. And then something interesting happens, get user input until done. Now let's take a look at that function. We can see over here that we have this done phrase and that's the default message inside of this text input. And essentially what happens is we will repeat this part until the user input is done. So then the user is actually done with this input. And as long as that is happening, we are doing something that looks a little weird right now, but I'll explain in a second. Now this whole loop, you already saw that, and that was part of the loops video. So in case this already looks strange to you, go back and take a look at the loops video where we had exactly this kind of an example. What's happening here is that we are creating a Lua table. That's how Lua refers to these lists, right? And if you remember from the intro, all I'm showing you right now is how you can use these tables as a list. We'll see another use case in the next video. But essentially what this does over here is create an empty list. And now what's interesting here is that we're taking this list and in here we have a number. And on the position of that number, we will store a value, in this case, the user input. And what's interesting is that this is sort of two examples in one. Uh, with this pound or with this hashtag symbol, we can find out how many entries we have in this user inputs list. So let's say the, the first iteration of this loop is happening, then this is empty, right? So this returns zero and then plus one writes this user input to the first slot. Now here's another big, big difference uh, between Lua and pretty much every other programming language out there. Usually when you are working with lists or arrays, most of the time the lists always start with zero. In this case, it's one. So that's why we're always adding a value to the end of the list. Once we have those list of numbers, what we do down here is use this for loop and actually go through this list. And I hope that makes sense. So this is always the index number that we use up here or the key. And then this over here will contain the value that we input, in this case, the user input. And this I pairs operator, all it does is essentially return this list in this way that you can go through it in this for loop. So then what we do is we print out the index number that we used or the, the Q number of that entry in the list, if you will. And then we are also going to assign this value, this effect number. So let's go back to the terminal window and see what that looks like. So we see here item number one assigning effect number one. And that's just coincidence because that's the first value that we added. You can see here it counts up to six, that's perfect. And what we did down here as well is actually um, add all of these other values. What's a little funny here is that I forgot to exclude this done statement. <laughs> so we probably wanna add another condition here. So we see over here that I don't expect any empty input and I'm also not going to accept any input that is equal to the done. So let's save that. Let's copy and paste this over to the console and let's try again. And again, if at this point, any of these concepts look foreign to you, no worries, just pause the video and go back to the video about conditions or loops or any of that stuff. And also it might help to actually Google a few more examples on the side about how to create lists in Lua. All right, let's try again. Starting executor again, number six. And then in this case, I'm actually gonna go with one, five, and then I wanna do seven. And now again, I'm done, so I'm just pressing enter. And now we can see that it didn't work. 
the reason why it didn't work is because we <laughs> wrote this condition wrong. So we said user input is not equal to empty, perfect. And user input equals to done. That's of course only true for the last element. So I apologize, but at the same time, this is what you will be doing all of the time while you figure out how to make your plugins work. And that's very normal. So again, <clears throat> inserting this here, and by the way, that's also a great point or great reason why you should output values to the terminal window. Make sure to check out the debug uh, video where I show you a really cool trick on how you can enable and disable these kinds of information that allow you to know exactly what's happening in your plugin. All right, one last time, executor six and now one, two. I'm going to go five and seven and now I'm entering done. And here we go. We have all the right things up here. And that's just a really basic example of how you can use lists in Lua. It might be a bit advanced. It's actually the sort of practical example. But again, you can check out the next video for more usage of tables in Lua. And if you're unsure, then please just go ahead and Google lists or arrays in Lua and you will find plenty of examples out there. And then you can come back and use this code to build yourself a really nice plugin.